The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Erin Holscher. I'm the Business Development Manager here at ASTA. I'll be the organizer for today's presentation, hosted by our partners, United Airlines. The title of today's webinar is United and NDC, Your Questions Answered. One lucky advisor attending live today will win a pair of round-trip coach tickets anywhere system-wide. Before we get started, I'd like to point out a few important features on your screen that will allow you to interact with us via the web. We'll be answering your questions at the end of the presentation. However, please feel free to submit your questions throughout. To ask a question, you'll use the GoToWebinar pane. Near the bottom of this pane is an area that says Questions. If you click on the arrow, it will open up a window pane. This is what you will use to communicate with us. If you're having trouble hearing the presentation, please make sure your speakers are turned on. And if you called in, try hanging up and dialing back in again. You can send me any technical issues via that same questions pane, and I'll do my best to answer. I will respond to you via that same pane. Please also note that all audience members are muted. We certainly want to hear from you, but we have so many people on the call that the background noise would be prohibitive. And we want to ensure that everyone can listen to the entire presentation. Finally, please remember that this webinar is being recorded and available for on-demand viewing at ASTA.org in just a few short days. Please join me in welcoming today's first presenter, Tiago Veloso. Tiago, take it away. Thank you very much for that, uh, Aaron. And now, warm welcome to uh, United's NDC webinar. Uh, on behalf of the entire United team, I would like to express our uh, sincere gratitude to uh, Aaron and the uh, ASTA group for hosting this webinar and giving us the opportunity to present and engage with this group. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tiago Veloso. I'm the Managing Director of Agency Sales here at United Airlines. Um, agency partnerships are extremely important to us. Uh, we know you have a choice of carriers when uh, you're booking your customers, uh, and we strive to earn and be trusted with your business. Uh, and this is why we feel it's important to continuously provide you with uh, information and clarity on uh, some of the strategies we're developing around distribution. Um, we know how incredibly busy you are, um, but you still manage to find the time uh, to engage with us today. We, um, we truly appreciate that. Uh, we value your par partnership and, uh, and hope you find value in the content we are sharing here today. Uh, and yes, Aaron, we do have an awesome prize to give away. So uh, please stay tuned and stay with us until the end of the session. Uh, and uh, one lucky winner will um, will will walk away with a pair of system-wide economy class tickets anywhere in the world United flies. But uh, you got to be in it to win it until the end. So good luck. Um, before we get started, just a couple of uh, um, introductions and joining us today as presenters. As you mentioned, we have uh, Glenn Hollister, our Vice President of Sales and Effectiveness. He will uh, be talking about uh, our distribution landscape um, along with uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Christensen uh, is the director of distribution, and he will be focusing more on the NDC and continuous pricing strategies. Um, joining us also for Q&A from the United side, I have my colleagues Andrew O'Connell, uh, the senior manager for Direct Connect, and Arjun Gupta, senior manager for uh, United for Business. Um, the purpose of today's call is really to provide you with information about uh, our approach to distribution, um, what we're doing in terms of innovation and investments we are making in this space, um, as well as to focus in in, uh, in the future what what we're seeing and what we're uh, striving to achieve with this technology. Um, as a reminder, the information we are sharing here today is intended for this audience and should be otherwise treated as confidential. So, um, with that uh, and without further ado, I would like to turn things over to uh, Glenn Hollister, Vice President, Sales Strategy and Effectiveness at United Airlines. Uh, over to you, Glenn. Thank you very much, Tiago, and welcome to everyone who has joined the webinar today. And also, thank you to our partners at ASTA for making this possible. Um, I want to start by setting a little bit of long term context for what United is doing. Um, and specifically some things that are uh, of relevance and interest to uh, travel advisors. First, I wanna talk about our network. Um, you probably know that we've made a number of expansions in our international network over the last several years. 
Uh, we are in fact by far the largest international carrier out of the United States um, with uh, roughly as many wide body planes as our next two closest competitors combined. Uh, that, that has led to us being the largest uh, carrier across the Atlantic um, from either side of the Atlantic uh, and also the largest carrier across the Pacific. Um, and while doing that, we've been able to launch a number of new destinations, uh, many of which are very leisure oriented and uh, which we are the only airline to serve. Uh, as well as <clears throat> this fall, we will be the uh, largest carrier uh, to Australia and New Zealand. Um, so the, the largest carrier to the South Pacific as well. And of course, we've maintained our extensive network elsewhere, including adding interesting destinations uh, such as Manila and Christchurch. Domestically, we're actually expanding even more. We have a large order book of new narrow body planes, uh, and that has led to us being uh, really the only legacy carrier that uh, in the third quarter of this year will grow our capacity domestically versus uh, 2019. Um, so we're looking forward to that. We have a lot more frequencies uh, and uh, uh, continually improving schedule on the domestic network side. Of course, it's not just the number of planes, it's what's inside the plane that matters. Uh, and we have kicked off our United Next uh, retrofit of our existing fleet. And that is a project that includes uh, new seats with a, an entirely new in-flight entertainment system with uh, seat back screens at every seat, uh, the ability to sync your Bluetooth headset to the IFE, um, as well as power to every seat, one-to-one -one, uh, overhead bag space. So there's a space for everyone to bring a bag on in the overhead bins uh, and many other refresh aspects of the interior. Uh, so all those are rolling out across our fleet uh, as I speak. Um, and are really improving not just where you can do, go, uh, but what it's like uh, when you're on the way. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, move on and start talking about distribution. As we start thinking about distribution uh, from an United perspective, there are several things that have become really clear to us uh, as we talk with our customers, right? The first is that our customers increasingly are seeking a modern uh, retailing experience similar to what they uh, find in other industries. Uh, and that most definitely includes a strong mobile aspect to what they're looking for. Uh, secondly, uh, it, in the airline industry, you now we're at a place where we uh, are finally getting some new technology that has the opportunity to do a lot of things we've historically not been able to do things that benefit not only our travelers, but also benefit you as a travel advisor. Um, and along with that, we are starting to evolve our, our products uh, and how we offer them in different distribution channels, which leads us to uh, the statement that we uh, published last week, um, which is something that has not done for a long time, right? Which is we wanted to make a clear and transparent statement about what our distribution strategy is. Uh, that is something that our um, travel advisors across the travel agency community have asked for, uh, as well as many other customers. Uh, and so there are really three important aspects to the strategy we announced last week. The first is broad omni-channel content. And really what we're trying to achieve is to put content in front of buyers where they want to buy. And they're, they're, that is subject to two limitations. The first is the technological capability of the channel to take the content. And the second is that it has to be economically viable for United to put the content there. Uh, and you will see differences, right? So I'll talk in a minute about how we're removing some basic economy fares from Edifact, uh, but there are differences in the other direction too. So our NDC channel does not currently include uh, group sales, for example. Um, so while we have a lot of content in every channel, it is not universally the same across every channel. Uh, the second uh, 
statement in our distribution strategy uh, is about aligning our costs of distribution uh, across uh, the uh, different channels to try to make them as similar as possible. That is something that will not uh, generally impact most uh, individual travel advisors, um, but will have some impact at the agency level. Uh, and the last and probably uh, most important from a forward-looking perspective is where is United going to invest and where are we going to innovate? And the answer is that that is primary, primarily going to be in the NDC channel and our direct channel. And that's just due to the simple fact that Edifact has, from a technology standpoint, pretty much run its course. There's very little we can do to improve or expand the Edifact channel. Uh, and as a result, the, the vast majority of our investment will be going into the NDC and direct channels. So those are our three high level uh, statements about our distribution strategy. Uh, and then let me talk a little bit about the first initiative we have announced coming out of that, which is the removal of some basic economy fares from Edifact. That will be effective on September 5th. Uh, and those fares are shown here. It is for US point of origin, all basic economy fares within the United States and between the United States and short haul Latin America will be removed from Edifact. Uh, and you can see exactly what we mean by short haul Latin America. That's the map on the right hand side. Those fares that are being removed from Edifact will still be available in our direct channels and in NDC channels. And let me talk a little bit about why we're doing this, right? And it goes to that first point of the strategy that uh, it needs to be economically viable when we sell products somewhere. Our basic economy product is designed to be sold in conjunction with ancillaries. If we aren't able to sell ancillaries with the basic economy product, uh, the economic outcome for United is not positive. Uh, and therefore, that is why we're removing these from Edifact, uh, is the fact that we cannot sell ancillaries through Edifact. Um, and as you can see the scope here, uh, one of the frequent questions we get is, is this it or is there more? Uh, what I will say is we certainly have been talking internally about do we take other basic economy fares out of Edifact? Uh, I suspect that will happen at some point, but there is no timeline because those other routes involve uh, airline partners. Uh, it's a much more uh, complicated and careful process we have to go through if we decide to do that. Beyond basic economy, we have not considered any other content removal. Uh, it's not on a roadmap um, and not anything that's under discussion at this time. Uh, so that wraps up my section. Now I know that everyone's going to have a lot of questions about the specifics. So very fortunate that we are joined uh, by Jeff Christensen, our Director of Distribution, who has a lot of specifics about uh, NDC in particular, uh, and how it really changes the experience, not just for the traveler, but also for the travel advisor. So Jeff, over to you. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you everyone for joining us today. It's really great to be with you. So Glenn just shared an overview of our distribution strategy in our recent announcement. I want to talk to you about why we've invested in new distribution capability, or NDC, and the innovations that we've enabled through NDC. One of the key reasons we've launched NDC is to make servicing easier for both travel advisors and for customers. Let's start with an overview of how this is possible. And so on the screen, you'll notice that we're illustrating the way existing technology or Edifact technology works. With this traditional technology, the price of a ticket is calculated as United transmits our schedule to OAG, our prices to ATPCO, and our availability to the aggregator. I like to think of it as United sends the ingredient for our cake for others to bake, decorate, and put on the shelf for the customer. In contrast, if you look at the bottom of the slide, NDC gives United the ability to create the cake, 
baked and decorated for our customers. You'll notice the green rectangle on the slide. With our approach, NDC relies on the same capabilities that United uses for our website, so united.com, and our award-winning mobile app. This setup means when a customer buys a ticket via NDC, the ticket is issued using our ticketing system. When the, when the customer rebooks their trip, the ticket is reissued by, again, using United's ticketing system. Because our systems power the solution, it means we can give travel agencies and their customers access to United's self-servicing capabilities, our fare products, and our ancillaries. So both travel agencies and United Direct Channels end up using the exact same platform. This approach was intentional. It's something that we designed because we wanted to have a single source of truth. All systems point to our platform and this single source of truth eliminates discrepancies between systems. Let's go into a little bit of the innovations that NDC enables. And so on this slide, I'm showing a customer journey and there's kind of three areas that I'm highlighting here, three different parts of the customer journey I wanna talk about. I wanna to touch on some of the innovations that we offer via NDC. And so the first area is shopping. And so during shopping, you'll notice a call out that talks about NDC content. Just to touch on that briefly, NDC allows us to offer continuous pricing and our portfolio of ancillary products and services using United created and validated offers. On a later slide, I'll go into the details about continuous pricing, but here I just wanna to touch on, again, we're trying to make available to our customers everything that we make uh, available through our direct channels and, and do it in a way that the technology is reliable and we reduce the amount of friction and issues that occur. Let's go to the next group. So this is under omni-channel servicing. So under this portion of the page, I wanna first highlight, you, there's a call out here, UA automation for sched changes or schedule changes, uh, irregular ops or what we call IROPS, et cetera. And so let's highlight this for a minute. Let's suppose that a customer encounters a weather event and United issues a travel, a, a travel waiver that allows customers to rebook their trip. The customer calls their travel advisor and they start to change their trip. The current waiver process is manual. First, the agent needs to get involved. Uh, there needs to be agent intervention. Second, the agent needs to look up a waiver code and determine whether it's applicable to the customer's journey. Then they need to add that waiver code to the reservation and ensure the changes made fall within the parameters listed of course, this is in, in order to avoid debit memos. And finally, they must process the exchange and refund. So this is a multi-step manual process, and it's prone to error, and it's, it's not particularly effective in a scenario where a customer might be trying to get the last seat on a flight to avoid getting stuck in a storm. United's NDC solution has taken this process and automated it. How have we done that? What we've done is we've automated every part of this. And so all the travel advisor needs to do is reshop the itinerary. Everything else is calculated. They don't need to look up the waiver, it's auto applied. They don't need to add the waiver, it's already in the record. Everything is automated. The, the, the parameters of what's allowed is made available. If, if you go outside the parameters, there would be an ad collect. It's very clear what's in policy and what's out of policy. That information is provided to the travel advisor. And so this frees up a travel advisor's bandwidth and helps them to service customers with more complex requests or handle multiple calls like this in the same time it would have taken them to handle one. The self, uh, additionally, this means that because the waiver is already applied, the customer could alternatively go to other places and service themselves. 
Uh, they could use uh, Unitas mobile app or Unitas website. And again, this frees up an agent from having to, to work through some of these stressful situations. Let's go into another call out in this section. So still under omni-channel servicing, I guess I want to highlight overall what we're talking about when we say omni-channel servicing. It really means that the customer can contact the travel agency or United for their servicing. During the pandemic, we learned that servicing was crucial. Due to system restrictions, travel agencies have limited access to a lot of the functionalities that, that airlines like United have developed. And this limited amount of servicing can be a source of frustration for many of our customers. For example, let's suppose we have a schedule change. And we, in, in this case, we want to get the customer uh, on their way as quickly as possible, make sure that they have the best itinerary that's available. In legacy systems, let's say there's a schedule change, when the customer calls United to learn more about their options, after waiting on hold, United would tell the customer, you'll need to call the agency. There's a ticket control issue here. The agency has access to your ticket. United does not. And so sadly, due to these limitations in our current system, the customer gets caught up in a really annoying game of hot potato. Under NDC, we have automated the process once again. All the travel advisor has to do is reshop the itinerary and everything is handled. They don't need to look up a waiver code. They don't need to add a waiver code. They don't need to look at the parameters. They can simply start the reshop process and they'll have the right information to address the customer's needs. Again, it's automated. We're able to apply our solutions to this problem and simplify servicing for travel advisors. And this is possible because as I talked about cakes earlier, we're all using the same uh, technology platform. United is, is uh, creating the cake. United is answering the question. United is able to help uh, travel advisors in these type of servicing scenarios. So as we look at this, an important thing to also explain, because it uses our systems and our platform, the booking is always in sync. There's one source of truth. Additionally, the booking is always travel ready. The, the uh, ticket matches the booking. We're, we're able to ensure that the customer, when they go to check in or when they're at the airport, they run into no issues. They're ready to travel. One more call out on this, this slide that I want to talk through. On the far right under TMC, or excuse me, under uh, transparency, uh, I want to talk about fewer ADMs or, or debit memos. An ADM is short for a debit memo. I don't like ADMs. I don't believe any of us really like ADMs. They don't add value, and they're the source of considerable frustration, both for airlines and for agencies. In a recent travel article, uh, there was an, uh, someone who wrote that about one in every 300 transactions result in a debit memo. That means United issues thousands upon thousands of debit memos, and those debit memos are then manually worked by travel agencies and often reworked by airlines. Again, a huge source of frustration and no values really created between the airline and the travel agency in these types of scenarios. In NDC, just to talk through what we're doing to reduce debit memos, we actually eliminate many of the reasons, many of the sources of debit memos today. For example, NDC offers are generated by the, off, by the airline. We create the price. This means that we can stop issuing fare-related debit memos for offers created using NDC. United created the price. We quoted the fare. We provided the fare quote that you give to the customer. That means we don't need to audit the transaction. 
nor do we need to issue a debit memo. We get out of the game of debit memos, again, for anything that's fare related. Can you imagine not needing to constantly worry about these type of debit memos? I want to move forward in our slides here and share our efforts in implementing NDC across the ecosystem. And we've been working with all players uh, throughout the industry to make NDC a reality. I just want to highlight a few examples of the efforts that are underway. On the slide, you'll notice that we're grouping uh, two different types of NDC providers. So on the left is the GDSs, and on the right is what I'm referring to as a new technology aggregator. And so let's talk about the GDSs first. I'm going to touch on each of them. Let me talk about a quick update on what we're doing with each of them. Travelport is not yet live. They've just completed their end-to-end -end testing. We expect them to go live this month. Uh, we're, we're hoping any day now we'll be able to go live with them. And so they're almost at the end of the development cycle uh, where they've got NDC at least at the minimum viable product level and we're ready to start moving forward with Travelport. Sabre, let's talk about Sabre next. We're, Sabre is live. And right now we're working to enhance their solution. So we're working through the Sabre roadmap to roll out more of the booking and servicing capability that we've got in our solution and extend it into the Sabre platform. And so as an example, right now Sabre has a limitation where they only permit one passenger per booking. We're working with them to enable multi-passenger PNR. By the way, this limitation has been solved by other GDSs and new tech aggregators. We're anxious for Sabre to solve it as well. And that work is underway. We hope it to conclude soon. An update on, and, and, and again, to pursue other roadmap uh, capabilities with Sabre. So keep making their, their solution better. Finally, let me touch on Amadeus. Uh, Amadeus has, or number of functionalities that are enabled in their solution. Uh, we're working with them on their roadmap. Right now, an item that we're working together on is using an, or taking an unused e-ticket and being able to reshop it through NDC. And so we're actively creating that enhancement and we hope to deploy that soon. And again, with each of these players, we're working to enable you know, everything that we can do in Edifact, we want to be able to enable in these players. It's going to take us a little bit of time, but we're actively working with each of them to make that a reality. Let's move over to the new tech aggregator box. I'm not going to go through each of these. There's too many. This is a comprehensive list of, of new tech aggregators that we've connected to our NDC solution. Uh, most of these providers offer a solution which includes the innovations the servicing capabilities that we're excited about. Uh, they really extend what we can do and they have a robust offering. A recent development is our launch with SpotNana. SpotNana, like these others, have great servicing capabilities. Uh, and so we've, we've enabled that and, and they're up and running. In addition, they have a best-in-class booking tool as well. And so SpotNana is one of the players that's out there that have taken on our solution and really made what we're trying to do a reality. And so excited to work with, with all of these players and get to a place where the capabilities we want to have in place uh, have been developed and launched. All right, let's touch on one more area of NDC. Let's click to the next slide here. NDC means that we can do things that we've always wanted to do, but they, that it just hasn't been possible with Edifact technology. An example of this is that United has price points that we are willing to sell, but our technology does not allow us to offer these prices. We refer to these additional price points as continuous pricing. If you look at the chart on the screen, 
the horizontal axis is the price we want to sell. If you look at the vertical axis, it's the fair quote, or it's the ticket price that's being offered to the customer. And you know this story probably just as well as I do. In traditional pricing, you have this stair-step outcome. So you see with the gray line how this works. In a particular market, if we shut down one fare, the price jumps up to the next fare class. And so as an example, K class is $100. As soon as we shut down K class, uh, we stop selling the $100 price point point and we move on to selling L class at 120. And so when we when we uh, shut down K, the price jumps from $100 to 120. As we graph continuous pricing, you'll notice it's a smooth curve. We're able to smooth the line and match the price we want to sell with the ticket price that we quote to the customer. In other words, continuous pricing allows us to have an, in, an infinite number of price points. Let me quickly touch on a couple of examples. If you look towards the bottom left of these graph lines, you'll notice that the traditional price line and the continuous pricing line overlap. And this occurs between the zero and $100 uh, point along the bottom of the graph. What does this mean? This means that continuous pricing is the same price as our traditional technology for our lowest fare. In both cases, the fare we're gonna charge in this part of the graph is $100. In other words, uh, with continuous pricing and with traditional pricing, our lowest fare is gonna be $100. That, that's the cheapest we'll offer in this market. It's gonna be the same in both instances. Let's look at a second example. As you look along the graph, you'll see some blue dots that are along the graph. Let's pick one of these dots. Let's say the price we want to sell is $195. With traditional technology, what happens is we would shut down our $175 fare and the price would jump up to $210. With NDC technology, we can use continuous pricing to sell the ticket for $195. In reality, this is a good thing for the customer. It means that the customer can get a lower price ticket with NDC. Now, as people think about continuous pricing and as they talk about it, I've heard a lot of different feedback. At a recent travel agency event, someone asked, how concerned should we be that airlines are going to use NDC to raise fares? And then they added, as I understand it, with continuous pricing, you win some, you lose some. These remarks suggest that sometimes we'll raise the price and sometimes we'll lower it. With our approach, this simply is not true. It's not you win some, you lose some. We've designed the system so that you win some, and you tie some. With our approach, you can tie. You can have the exact same price as what's filed in ATP Co today and, and available through Edifact today. Or you can get a cheaper price sometimes with NDC. The customer does not lose. In fact, if we were to use NDC to raise the price, it would be counterproductive. The agency would simply go back to Edifact Tech technology and book the ATP co-filed fare using Edifact. We're really excited about continuous pricing because it introduces a win-win outcome. We can unlock additional demand for our flights by offering additional price points and the customer can pay a lower price. I wanted to highlight a couple of stats that are on the slide. You see them on the bottom and they have to do with economy cabin, what we've been seeing with continuous pricing. The first stat is 40% of the time, continuous pricing is cheaper than traditional channels. That means the other 60% of the time, they're the same. The second stat is that on average, continuous pricing results in a 7.5% discount. Again, that's an average. It can be higher, it can be lower, uh, but that's the average that we've seen lately. So that's a good overview of continuous pricing. 
was was a little geeky there. I apologize for getting out graphs and, and walking through the elements here, but want to make sure you understand how it works. We click to our, our last slide here. Just want to make you aware that we have an NDC website that provides a lot of detailed information. You can learn more about NDC, look at FAQs, uh, learn more specifically about what we're doing at united.business slash NDC. Now, Aaron will go ahead and moderate our Q&A. Wonderful. Well, thank you again to all of our presenters for such amazing information and the transparency and, and clarity for our travel advisors. So thank you to United Partners for, for sharing this information. I have got a handful of questions here that I'm going to read from travel advisors. The other thing that I'd like to mention here on the webinar is that any questions that we don't get to today, I will be sharing with United and they may follow up with you to be able to provide additional clarity or be able to, to touch base um, if, if appropriate. So let's see here. So we're going to we're going to dive into some questions here and will we be able to book and ticket in Apollo? And Sabres, or let's see here, in Apollo and WS SmartPoint NDC tool and Sabres Red Space NDC tool. I'll, I'll jump in and answer that. And, and just so you know, I'm joined by, again, Andrew and Arjun. And so when it gets more technical, I'm going to look at Andrew and Arjun to jump in here. But yes, the way that NDC works is we are extending these capabilities into. Sabre into Travelport into Amadeus and so examples of that would be Sabre Red 360. It would be in SmartPoint. It will be in Amadeus Citrix. So all of these systems are going to be NDC enabled and the servicing and the products and services we've talked about will be, ama be made available there. Okay, wonderful. Now, what happens if the client needs to cancel an NDC flight rather than rebook? So uh, this is Andrew answering this question. It, it works uh, in some of the tools that Jeff mentioned uh, very much the same way. It's, it's, a, it's a, a cancellation, but we cancellate it in our system. And uh, depending on the fare rules, uh, the uh, the, the value would either be refunded to the customer if it's a refundable ticket or would result in a residual value stored in the ticket. Excellent. Thank you. Now, how will this work with code shares like Lufthansa? Are NDC fares only offered on pure United reservations? No. So let's get into the types of itineraries that we have a solution for. Of course, through NDC, we offer United operated flights, like so itineraries that wholly involve United operations. Additionally, our solution supports United uh, combined with code share itineraries. And finally, we also support United combined with interline partners. So our interline partners that we have agreements with, those itineraries are available through NDC today. Uh, as we talk to other players in the industry, we learned that most of them have their operated flights and they have their code share flights. Very few have integrated interline itineraries, but that's something that we knew would be needed. And so we didn't want to deploy NDC until that was enabled. And so it's part of our solution today. Excellent. Thank you. Now, are, are all NDC fares commissionable? Are only select ones and will be they be paid via ARC? Well, I'll let you answer unless you want me to answer. Yeah, sure, I'll answer. So the short answer is that NDC does not change which fares are commissionable. Uh, whatever programs are applicable today are applicable on NDC. Uh, the slightly more complex is how does it get paid? Uh, so if it is a time of ticketing commission, uh, we're in the uh, middle of piloting a solution on NDC that would be uh, settled via ARC. And if we want more uh, detail on that, probably need to ask Andrew or Arjun to provide it. 
Now, let's see here. Could you could you show that second? Gloria, this is going to be for you. Could you show that second to last slide with the united.com business URL, please? I know we had a, some travel advisors that wouldn't be able to utilize that. Thank you. So now, and, and to clarify, if the client needs to change their ticket, do they still need to contact their travel advisor or they can they go directly through the app? Or could you talk a little bit more about that process? Sure, I'll answer that. It's uh, one of the things that we thought was really exciting as we build NDC is the ability to do what we call omni-channel servicing, which means that customer, when they wanna make a voluntary change, can contact United, they can contact their travel advisor, they can go back and forth however they want. Uh, the ticket is always kept in sync and the travel advisor can always see uh, what changes have been made and what the current uh, status of that ticket is. Now, will we be able to enter a United Perks Plus number to the NDC fair? I believe, hi, this is Arjun. So I believe Perks Plus are coded by a tour code and yep. NDC does indeed support uh, tour code entry um, via our solution. So the answer to that would be yes. Now let's see here. Is the ticket status still visible in the GDS as it is now? If a traveler cancels a non-refundable ticket, ticket trip directly with United, how is the agency notified? So again, the, the, the record is going to be kept in United system, but the GDS will have access to that record in United system at all times and, and, and is going to be able to display that. So the, uh, the terminology changes a little bit. We don't need to get into the, 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 the you know, definition of an order, but um, the, the access to that information, it remains the same. It's just where does that record of truth live? And it no longer is a, a GDS PNR that's the record of truth. It's a, a an airline PNR in our system. And just to add on to that, if if the customer does come to United to cancel their booking, there is a notification that is sent back to the agency. So not only is the record going to be in sync, but there's also a notification to supplement that to ensure that you have visibility into uh, into the order. Excellent, thank you. Now, and, and one thing I do wanna point out just with some, some buzz that's been coming in our chat here as well, and I wanna make sure that this website here on the site is case sensitive. So to any of our travel advisors that are coming up with any errors on that, that capital NDC is case sensitive. So if you're having any issues getting that 404 error code, um, please be sure to, to make sure you're using capital NDC on that. So I just wanna, um, we did a little troubleshooting with that as well. So let's see here. So a few other questions, just for understanding that, that ticketing process. So if a ticket is non-refundable, does the new ticket have to be booked at the same time of cancellation or will there be a credit for that future ticket? So the ticket, well, once you cancel, the value of, the residual value will be stored on that ticket itself and it's available for use within the ticket validity. So if, Within the next 12 months, the, the travel advisor could come in and help the customer create a new booking and use the funds associated with that ticket that was previously canceled. Of course, they could do it instantly or they could just cancel, uh, have that residual value available and use it at a later date. So either option are available through NDC. We, we support both of those use cases. Let's see here. So just a couple of, of questions. Now, does NDC accept corporate IDs, aka SNAP codes for large accounts? So yeah, I, I, that's a good question. And and the 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 answer is yes, but not as it's not as straightforward as that because SNAP codes are not uh, a code that exists in the United system. The SNAP codes that you're talking about that you're using are codes that are in the GDS system. So the GDS is gonna to continue to house those and 
we've worked with the GDSs on these implementations for them to be able to translate the SNAP code into something that NDC can handle, which is generally a tour code, sometimes an account code. I'll just underscore that by saying we have the capability in our solution to accept it. The GDS has to ensure that their solution uh, has the SNAP codes incorporated. So if, if we can accept the SNAP codes, the GDS has to build out that part of their solution for NDC. And, and one last question here, just for, for additional clarity here. Oh goodness, excuse me, I lost my question here. How is the agency notified when an NDC reservation is canceled by the client? If it's canceled by a client outside of an NDC channel, there is, it's called an order change notification. It's a message that's sent out um, to the to the travel agency informing them that a change was made to the booking. Jeff had it on one of his uh, previous slides where he was walking through the customer journey and the order change notifications actually cover, I'm gonna put them under three umbrellas. One is operational uh, notifications, so schedule changes or regular operations. Uh, the second umbrella is customer initiated changes, so changes made on united.com or an external channel. And finally, our, we have day of travel notifications. So you now have visibility into whether your traveler has checked in, whether they've no-showed for their flight. So you have the ability to, uh, to have this visibility um, into their entire journey from booking to travel. New, new information that's not available through Edifact. We're pretty excited about what uh, these OCNs, as, as we refer to them as, or order change notifications, what they can do and it's different technology, it's, at, it's XML messaging. And so it's a little different than the old system, but certainly something we're excited for the GDSs to consume, the new technology aggregators. This is, this is gonna change the way that we communicate with the agency and it's gonna improve the experience for our travelers. So we're super excited about it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for that additional clarity. Um, as, as we come to the end of this Q&A session here, I do want to let you know that, that we had many questions that came in. I will be sharing these questions with all of our United presenters as well, and they may be able to, to follow up with you directly on a, on a more one-on-one -on -one basis based off of need. Um, so I just wanted to, again, say thank you to our partners at United. Thank you for providing clarity and educating our, our ASTA travel members on this United strategy moving forward. So now I am very excited to, to transition into our next part of this webinar, which is that, that prize drawing. So again, our partners at United have provided one lucky advisor attending live today will win a pair of round trip coach tickets anywhere system wide for United. So drum roll please. And today's winner is Virginia McKay. So Virginia, I'll be sharing your contact information with United and they'll be touching base with you. So as I mentioned, this webinar was recorded. So if you'd like to listen to the presentation again, it will be available to all ASTA members at asta.org in just a few short days. Thank you again to our partners at United and all of you who have joined us for today's webinar. This concludes today's presentation. United Partners, anything to add? Hi, just a, a quick thank you and uh, congratulations to uh, Virginia on winning the tickets. Um, I would just close by saying thank you for your participation. Sincerely, uh, thank you for the time you took to join us today. Uh, we hope we provided meaningful information and uh, you found value in the content we uh, presented here today. Uh, things are evolving very quickly, no doubt, in, uh, in the distribution space, but uh, just know that our goal is to continue to innovate, but um, with the intent of making it easier for you. Uh, and your customers to do business with us. Um, you have our commitment to consistently and transparently communicate our strategies with you uh, and all of our agency partners for that matter, as we've done here today. So uh, again, uh, we sincerely value your partnership and the business you consistently book on United Airlines, and we look forward to a future engagement. So take care and uh, thank you again. Well said, thank you, Tiago. Thank you, Tiago. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.